Here is the starter and all the tools that we use to remove it. You will notice the curvature of the extension which is credited to the ball extension end. This curve is required to remove these bolts from the starter and its bell housing. You could also use a universal on the end of a straight extension to do the same thing. The 13 millimeter is to remove the starter cable bolt from the back here. So this is the second time we're removing the starter for a rebuild and the reason we are removing it is because oil from the crankshaft rear main seal will leak into the starter and enter itself into the motor. So we're now going to go into the starter to make the necessary repair to its brushes on the back of the motor. You could go to this video here to see how to rebuild the starter and replace the brushes. So here you will notice I have the back of the starter motor release and we can look inside the cover and we can see the brushes are basically not able to make a pressure contact with its terminal so it's time for us to replace the brushes and the starter will continue to operate as it normally would. So here I have the brush terminal connector removed from the starter motor backing cover and I just want to slip this clip right here just want to get this out of the way so we can remove this cover for a visual inspection of the brushes and we can see how the spring is fully extended on all of them and that is a sign that the brushes are worn out and the spring is not providing adequate pressure to contact the armature terminals. We want to make sure we inspect the armature contact surface, make sure we clean out all in between the lines and this surface here should be absolutely smooth. You should feel no friction or groove inside its surface. You're also going to want to rebuild the starter like I did here, regrease it and clean up the internal and you could go to this video here to see how to rebuild the complete starter and install its new brushes. Here is the distributor for the new brush communicator that we're going to install into the starter. So when we look at the new brush communicator we can see it has a different brush in compare to the old one that we replace. The old one is more of a black composite and the new one is more of a copper material. So in order for us to prepare this brush communicator for installation, so this part here is going to be the back of the brush communicator facing the rear of the starter and this part here is going to go forward like this but we must compress these brushes inside the communicator to make the installation. So what I first want to do is I want to take this 7-8 socket and I just want to wedge it in here. Once I have the socket fitted inside the brush communicator I will now take this same socket, you must pay attention to the installation and notice these two little clips have to face the back because this is where the bolt is going to attach the brush communicator to the motor rear cover and this part is going to get placed simply against the armature and we will push on the armature to fit the brush communicator perfectly to the armature communicator. You see you could use a pick to set the brushes onto the armature but this will most likely damage the brushes so this is another way for installing the brush communicator using this 7-8 socket.
So now we must position our brush communicator so the wire, the positive terminal wire, seat inside the motor case groove. Now we will take the motor cover and you can see this is the old cardboard from our previous installation. I've also painted the cover inside and out to prevent future rust and we have applied new grease to the bushing bearing. So let's place the cover with this notch aligning to the wire terminal. So I will attach my clamping bolt. This bolt clamps the back cover, the coil field, against the starter housing planetary casing. Once the brush communicator has been completely installed and the rear cover is attached, we want to pay attention to how we install our motor solenoid, we must make sure our terminal is positioned correctly. So we want the solenoid cable to be at 3 o'clock, our battery cable to be at 12 o'clock, and the motor terminal to be at 6 o'clock. We must not forget this position. We are complete with the installation. Now we're going to go and install the starter into the vehicle and continue driving but we must repair the crankshaft rear main oil seal to prevent this excessive worn to the brushes inside the starter. When the oil leak past that seal from the crankshaft and enter into the transmission bell housing, it will enter inside the starter from this Bendex gear and eventually it will end inside the electric portion of the motor even though the motor has a drainage for that on the bottom. The oil will then saturate these brushes and wore out much quicker than they normally would. We will now reinstall the refurbished starter and if it continue to persist with the same action demonstrating the same sound we will then have to replace the electric portion of the starter motor. Sometime the coil field inside the armature and the magnet which is stuck to the outside casing cage will become weak in its static ability and this will cause a weak motor. So we will then proceed and replace this electric portion if the starter continue to give us a fail condition after checking all terminal connection and battery voltage.